The black body is the standard by which radiation is compared since it is an ideal absorber. As will be seen, it is also an ideal emitter. So there are very few materials where carbon black and some specially formulated black paints approach the black body in terms of energy absorption properties. Prevost's law says that if you place a black body in an insulated enclosure with black walls, it'll come into thermal equilibrium, and so that means that the sample must radiate the same amount of energy as it absorbs. So, what this really means is that an ideal absorber must also be an ideal emitter. So the key point here is that a black body is both an ideal absorber and an ideal emitter. If we want to understand a little bit better about black body emission characteristics, we have to understand the coordinate systems that might be used for these types of analyses. So what we do is we consider a, a, an elemental surface area element, so differential or elemental surface area element, dA, and we put a hemisphere, a radius r around it. So this is the hemisphere. And we're measuring in polar coordinates here, in spherical polar coordinates, uh, where uh, theta and is the angle me measured off of z, and phi is this uh, angle measured uh, circumferentially here. And we ask the question of how much radiation is emitted in any given direction, and we talk about this in terms of this parameter called the intensity. So there's a spectral body black body intensity, IB lambda, and a total quantity, which is integrated over all wavelength. To really understand this problem, though, we really have to understand the idea of the differential solid angle, d omega. So d omega is defined as a differential area that's normal to a ray coming off of this uh, base element at, divided by the distance to this differential area element uh, R squared. And so this DAN is comprised of two factors. So if you think about it, what we're doing is we're actually looking at the surface area. We're looking at this surface area, DAN, and you can think about it as being comprised of this R. So that this angle is theta. This is R sine theta swept out over d phi, and then this length is nothing more than r d theta. So not surprisingly, the uh, area element is r squared sine theta d theta d phi. And this is a, a differential spherical element area. If we divide this by r squared, we get the omega, which is then just equal to sine theta d theta d phi. We're going to be using the def this notion of an intensity, and so the intensity is an interesting uh, quantity. And so the intensity of interest, sometimes we'll call it the, uh, the spectral directional intensity, is going to be, I'm going to use sometimes this notation I lambda phi. Uh, what I mean by that is it's I lambda in all the different directions in theta and phi. And so I lambda phi, you can think about this as the amount of heat that's transmitted from, for example, this base divided by a particular direction which is going to be given by d omega in a particular wavelength interval which is d lambda per projected area of the surface so in a particular um, per unit area uh, but in this projected direction so d omega is in a wavelength interval and a 
in a spherical solid angle interval. D lambda is in a wavelength interval. And per projected area. So the differential solid angle, as we showed, is uh, sine theta d theta d phi. And uh, the spectral directional intensity is the, really the heat transfer rate project per unit projected area per unit solid angle direction in a particular direction. So this is our DAP that we talked about before. And this is again D omega D lambda. So the rate at which radiation of some wavelength lambda leaves DA1 and passes through DAN is this DQ lambda. And the reason we have this as DQ lambda is it's a heat transfer rate of a particular wavelength or photons of a particular frequency. So you can think about this as uh, we have um, this base surface that's emitting photons of all sorts of different colors or all sorts of different uh, wavelengths in all different directions. And we're interested in particular in the ones that are going through in a particular direction and that direction is parameterized in a particular d omega window so that's uh, in a projected area window, and in particular directions um, that correspond to this theta and phi. So uh, the spectral radiation flux in that direction, dq double prime lambda, is the dq lambda, so only the ones photons of a particular color. And you might think about that in an interval lambda lambda plus delta lambda interval in now you see one of the interesting things is the heat flux is defined in terms of the true area as compared to the projected area so the difference is we take da1 and divide over here and then we get this cosine theta dependence there so the heat flux through a hemisphere above DA1 is where we would have to integrate over, over phi and over theta. So we'd integrate, so this is the heat flux through everything above DA1 as compared to in a particular direction. So now we're looking at a whole hemisphere. So before we were looking at just through a little patch here. Now we're interested in the heat transfer rate across the whole hemisphere and we understand that we have to integrate for theta between 0 and pi over 2 and for phi between 0 and 2 pi and we're just integrating the quantity that we had before which was this uh, dq lambda. Now uh, one of the things that we have to understand in radiation transfer is that uh, the solid angle for a hemisphere, and it's called subtended. So when we talk about the uh, the region that's enclosed or covered by a solid angle, we say it subtends it. And so for a hemisphere, this is the integral of 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi over 2 of sine theta. Remember, this is just d omega. And we find out that it's uh, actually just equal to 2 pi. And this SR is, uh, the notation is called steradian. You can think about the solid angle in terms of an analogy with the polar angle. So when we had um, in just a, a cylindrical polar coordinate, we know that the curvature, the arc length, ds, is equal to r d theta. So the analogy 
that we're using is that this patch of DAN is related to R squared D omega. Okay, so there's a direct analogy there. So the total heat transfer rate with uh, emission in all directions and overall wavelengths then is this integral of Q double prime lambda over all wavelengths from zero to infinity. So um, lambda, we approximate it as being uh, available from zero micrometer to an infinite micrometer number, infinite uh, length. And while the intensity is uh, per projected area, as we said before, the heat flux and the emissive power, another important quantity in radiation heat transfer, are defined in terms of actual area. So the emissive power is related to the intensity, but it's different by this cosine theta because of the fact that it's per actual area element. Uh, the emissive power is one of the most important parameters that we're going to use in radiation heat transfer. And the thing that we want to remember about it is that this directional spectral emissive power, so let's just kind of put the modifiers here, it's that it's in a particular direction, it's for photons of a particular color, and it's called the emissive power. So the, the directional spectral emissive power is the heat transfer rate and divided by the actual area of the element in a particular direction in a particular uh, wavelength interval. When we integrate the emissive power over a hemisphere, we call it the spectral hemispherical emissive power. It's still a function of the wavelength, and that's why it's called the spectral quantity. And we're simply inter integrating it over a hemisphere, and we know that a hemisphere integration is theta on pi over 2. And we know that the integration on, uh, for hemisphere is theta on pi over 2 and phi on 2 pi. So again, note the integration, an integration over the hemisphere. So really, this is a heat flux, and it's equivalent to a heat flux because it's the same idea as what we had before. Uh, for something called a diffuse emitter, which we'll see that a black body is a diffuse emitter, a diffuse emitter means that this intensity is not a function of direction. So if the intensity is not a function of direction, we can pull the intensity right out of that integral, and it means that it's, the intensity is just a function, in this case, of the wavelength, and we find out that the hemispherical, well, first of all, we'll, we'll, we'll say that the spectral uh, hemispherical emissive power is equal to the, the spectral diffuse uh, intensity times the integral of this uh, of cosine theta sine theta d theta d phi, which is just equal to pi. And further, if we integrate this over all wavelengths, and so now we're doing a wavelength integration between zero and infinity, then we just get the total emissive power. So the initial point is is that so this is not this is not the total. This is still the spectral emissive power. So the spectral emissive power is e lambda, which is pi i lambda e, and the integration over all the hemisphere. I'm sorry, over the um, over all wavelengths is this e quantity. And we say that E, which is the, the hemispherical total, emissive power, is just equal to pi times the hemispherical total intensity. So hemispherical means that we've integrated 
over a hemisphere. And total means that we've integrated over all wavelengths. So to conclude, a black body has the following properties. A black body absorbs all incident radiation regardless of the wavelength or direction, so it's complete absorption. For a particular temperature and wavelength, there's no surface that emits more power than a black body. And radiation emitted by a black body is independent of direction, that is, it's a diffuse emitter. And as such, it obeys this rule that we just showed you that E is equal to pi I, and prior to that, E lambda is equal to pi I lambda, where E lambda, again, is the spectral, meaning that it's wavelength dependent, hemispherical, meaning it's been integrated over the hemisphere, emissive power, and E is the total, meaning that over all wavelengths, hemispherical emissive power. So the closest approximation to a black body is a cavity whose inner surface is at some uniform temperature. What it means is that if we shine a laser or any kind of light source in there, we don't, after multiple reflections, we don't expect anything to come out. So this cavity is a perfect absorber in that sense. And interestingly enough, when we heat up the surface of the cavity, so we have some sort of radiant heater or coils uh, around it, and we have this at some temperature because of our uh, power in, the radiation that comes out has the properties of a black body at the temperature uh, that we have inside. And so that's a very useful uh, construct, construction and model.